Welcome to Music History Monday for May 6th, 2024. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is The Evolution of Western Pop Music, USA, 1960 to 2010. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. We mark the public release on May 6th, 2015, nine years ago today, of a scientific slash statistical study published by the Royal Society Open Science Journal, a study entitled The Evolution of Western Pop Music, USA, 1960 to 2010. Scoff not, my friends. This was in fact a high-end study conducted and written up by four high-end scientists. Dr. Matthias Mauch of the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science at Queen Mary University of London, whose current professional title is Research Manager for Recommender Systems and Music Intelligence at Apple Music. Dr. Robert M. McCallum, who teaches in the Division of Life Sciences at Imperial College London. Dr. Mark Levy, a former research assistant at the Center for Digital Music at the University of London, and for the last three years, a principal research scientist at Apple where he researches potential future applications of machine learning to music creation and listening. And finally, Armand M. Leroy, a professor of evolutionary developmental biology at Imperial College in London. Ho ho, these are scary fine creds on display, up, down, and sideways. The study's abstract is as follows. I figure it's better to get it directly from the quartet of Mouch, McCallum, Levy, and Leroy than to offer up a watered-down and abbreviated version of the abstract by yours truly. Quote, In modern societies, cultural change seems ceaseless. The flux of fashion is especially obvious for popular music. While much has been written about the origin and evolution of pop, most claims about its history are anecdotal rather than scientific in nature. To rectify this, we investigate the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 between 1960 and 2010. Using music information retrieval and text mining tools, we analyze the musical properties of approximately 17,000 recordings that appeared in the charts and demonstrate quantitative trends in their harmonic and timbral properties. We then use these properties to produce an audio-based classification of musical styles and study the evolution of musical diversity and disparity, testing and rejecting several classical theories of cultural change. Finally, we investigate whether pop musical evolution has been gradual or punctuated. We show that, although pop music has evolved continuously, it did so with particular rapidity during three stylistic revolutions around 1964, 1983, and 1991. We conclude by discussing how our study points the way to a quantitative science of cultural change." Unquote. Fascinating, yes? Yes. Methodology. The actual paper, The Evolution of Western Pop Music, USA, 1960 to 2010, is rather lengthy. 4,614 words. For your information, I let my computer do the word count. Overall, the paper is characterized by the sort of technical jargon we would expect to find in a scientific journal. For example, in the course of their introduction, the authors lay out their methodology as follows. Please bear with me 
through my reading. Quote, we adopted an approach inspired by recent advances in text mining. We began by measuring our songs for a series of quantitative audio features, 12 descriptors of tonal content and 14 of timbre. These were then discretized into words, resulting in a harmonic lexicon of chord changes and a timbral lexicon of timbre clusters. To relate the T lexicon to semantic labels in plain English, haha, <laughs> plain English, if only, we carried out expert annotations. The musical words from both lexica were then combined into 8 plus 8 equals 16 topics using latent Dirichlet allocations, LDA. LDA is a hierarchical generative model of a text-like corpus in which every document here, song, is represented as a distribution over a number of topics, and every topic is represented as a distribution over all possible words. Here, chord changes from the H lexicon and timbre changes from the T lexicon. We obtain the most likely model by means of probabilistic inference. Each song, then, is represented as a distribution over eight harmonic topics, H topics that capture classes of chord changes, for example, dominant seventh chord changes, and eight timbral topics, T topics, that capture particular timbres, for example, drums, aggressive percussive, female voice, melodic vocal, all derived from the expert annotations with topic proportions Q. These topic frequencies were the basis of our analysis. Unquote. Got that? Okay. I am so, so sorry I had to read that to you. Really, I am. But it was necessary to show you why we aren't going to get into the details of the study, but rather fairly quickly cut to the study's conclusions, which are, to my mind, of no small interest, methodology aside. Stylistic Revolutions The study is nothing if not ambitious. The authors divide American popular music into 13 generic, as in genre, categories. Those categories, these stylistic genres, are as follows. 1. Northern Soul slash Soul slash Hip Hop 2. Soul slash rhythm and blues slash funk slash disco. Three, blues slash jazz. Four, rock slash classic rock slash pop slash new wave. Five, hard rock slash alternative rock. Six, country slash country rock slash singer songwriter. Seven, classic country slash folk slash rockabilly. Eight, country love slash easy listening slash love song slash piano. Nine, love song slash slow jams. Ten, female vocal slash pop slash Motown. Eleven, dance slash new wave pop slash electronic. Twelve, rap slash gangster rap slash old school rap and finally 13 funk blues slash blues rock now look if you have issues with these genre names and groupings i won't blame you but please remember that they are not of my creation during the course of the author's abstract they asserted I trust you recall, that the ongoing evolution of the style of American popular music has been accelerated by three particularly disruptive, particularly revolutionary musical and technological events. The authors claim that these three stylistic revolutions took place in 1964, 1983, and 1991. To my mind, this is the most interesting result of the study because it quantifies something we already intuitively understood, 
that the deepening musical gene pool, meaning the globalization of American pop music, and the impact of technology on American popular music did indeed have a dramatic impact on its style. According to the authors, the 1964 revolution corresponded with the so-called British invasion of 1964, a year that saw a bevy of British bands find fame and fortune in North America. Now, most notably, those bands were the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. But let us not forget the Yardbirds, the Who, the Kinks, Herman's Hermits, the Animals, the Dave Clark Five, Jerry and the Pacemakers, Freddie and the Dreamers, and so forth. As a result of this British invasion, we are told that, quote, a radical new rock and roll sound appeared, unquote. Now, admittedly, this might sound as if the studies for British authors are giving their fellow countrymen props for shaking up the American pop scene and triggering the first of their stylistic revolutions. But in fact, they are not. Rather, their findings indicate a qualitative improvement in the content of song lyrics and an increase in harmonic and melodic complexity across the musical spectrum in 1964. It was a shift perhaps partially inspired by British bands, but one that was in no way limited to the British bands. The second revolutionary stylistic shift identified by the study occurred in 1983. This one was driven, say the authors, by technology, by digital synthesizers, samplers, and drum machines. Finally, the third stylistic shift came about in 1991 when, so claimed the authors, rap and hip hop went mainstream meaning that these genres were embraced by white performers and audiences. This latter stylistic shift is, to me, the most interesting of the three claimed in the study, and it raises the most questions. Nevertheless, there is solid, non-scientific evidence to support the study's assertion. Rock historian Derek Thompson writing in The Atlantic magazine on May 8, 2015, did indeed call the year 1991, quote, the most important year in pop music history, unquote. Thompson went on to assert that, quote, historical, musical, and quantitative evidence shows that the rise of rap is the most important thing that ever happened to the genre of popular American music." Unquote. The evidence behind these statements was none other than the Billboard charts, those super influential scorecards published by the industry magazine Billboard, toting up weekly sales of recordings. On June 22, 1991, the, up to that time, unthinkable happened. For the first, but certainly not the last time, a rap slash hip hop album took the number one spot on the Billboard chart. The album was Niggas for Life by the Compton, California based band NWA. The album debuted the previous week at number two and within its first seven days on the market sold nearly one million copies writes Derek Thompson, quote, Billboard had published an album chart for 45 years, but this marked a historic week. It was the first time that a rap group claimed the top spot. For several years, music historians have considered this, the consecration of rap on mainstream music charts, the watershed moment in modern music marking the death of hard rock and the dawn of a period where hip-hop has merged with several genres, including country, dance, and even alt-rock to become the modern sound of pop." Unquote. This number one spot was no one-time fluke. Since 1991, rap, 
slash hip-hop has been by far the most common genre of music on Billboard's Hot 100 chart. And there we have it. Whether or not we can follow the mathematical and statistical methodology employed in The Evolution of Western Pop Music, USA, 1960-2010, to the results of the study are fascinating, informative, and, based on what we already historically understood, quite accurate. For those of you with a scientific and mathematical bent, or for those good people with simply nothing else to do, a link has been provided to the original study. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.